Hey, you are along for the ride with the Mad Dog and Cole, the Mix Master, Farrell. Y'all ready for this? We have got a guest today, Mr. West Kane. Stay tuned. I decided to fly through the air and live in the sunlight and enjoy life as much as I could, and that's just what I'm doing. Ma'am, once again, thank you for the inspiration, Mr. Evil Knievel, credible icon. Um, just living that life, you know, that's what we're about here at Along for the Ride. Be sure and thank our partners, Bomber Eyewear, BomberEyewear.com, and Kicker Performance Audio at Kicker.com. Without further ado, we want to get right to the grits of this sucker. Ladies and gentlemen, we're bringing Wes Kane in. Wes, thank you so much for being here. I want to cover a couple of things. Um, obviously, you know, voice of kicker arena cross, voice of arena cross, voice of kicker enduro cross, uh, monster cup, I believe, yep. voice of monster cup. Um, holy smokes. My list is just so long. Uh, Loretta's, right? Yep. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Uh, also, many of you don't know, most people know that you work with Vanilla Ice on the Vanilla Ice TV show, Vanilla Ice Project. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't know that you are a big philanthropist, always helping out. And uh, something that very few people know is uh, you are a Marine. And we want to be sure and say thank you so much for your service. We have a great respect for all our service personnel uh, um, along for the ride here. So um, with that, ladies and gentlemen, Wes Kane, what's up? Hey, you know it, man. I'm glad <laughs> to be here. Thanks for having me on. I know you've been trying to track me down for the last couple of weeks. And um, my schedule is just so crazy, you know. Luckily, right now I'm out in Oregon for the second round of uh, Enduro Cross. So you tracked me down. You got me pinned up. Yep, yep. Well, if nothing, if I didn't get you tonight, I would have probably tracked you down Thursday night when I get there. So I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, sir. Yeah, and thank you. I mean, it's it's really special. You know, we're we're a little tiny beginning podcast, and um you're a big personality and it's really means a lot to us and to me and to Cole that, that you're on and, and uh, man, it's a huge deal for us. We're, we're great. And you're our first guest. Well, I, I appreciate you guys, you know, feeling that way about me. I am blessed. I'm humble. I don't, I don't do any of this for any reward. I do what I do for passion uh, I've been in, you know, my dad had a motorcycle shop, race boats, race cars. Well, I mean, as far as back as I remember, you know, four, five, six years old being at the racetrack, whether it be at the drag strip, the stock car track or the dirt bike track. So I, I do this for my passion, what I believe in and whatever I can do to help others. That's just that's just what I'm I guess what I'm called upon to do. You know, I don't try to go out of my way it just comes natural. And, and, you know, you could see with our friendship for, uh, for doing what we do at the races, plus yep. finding out that your, your love for race cars, as well as I do, we kind of got a little special, special, like I got to come talk to you. Yeah. got to find you. Share the moments, you know, that I get to, you know, enjoy being at stock car track, you know, and little secrets that you tell me I, I try to take in. So it's really cool. Uh, that's awesome thank you uh man that what an honor it is uh for sure and i think you know you kind of touched on on your dad so and and your beginnings and 
along for the ride is we're about a lot of things. We're a lot, we're about the carny life that guys like us live, you know? Um, and that was the deal with trying to get together was all these travel. I had travel glitches. I broke down. You had plane delays and <laughs> next thing you know, it's two weeks later. So <laughs> thinks is that when you're on the spotlight or you're on the go i mean just like seeing you at the races under your tent you're there with everything from kicker but nobody really knows how much hard work that you have to put in just to be there that weekend or the things that you have to do once you leave that racetrack or the travels or the places that you have to be and the sacrifices they have to make for the fan or the person that sees you there going okay he's here you know it's 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 they say it's a it's a glorious you know lifestyle but <laughs> you're sleeping at the airport trying to stay warm because your flight canceled at 2 a.m you didn't get your connection on your red eye back from la to get down to florida where's all those people at then you know it's just you and then they're <laughs> like well what are you doing speaking on the floor i'm like i have no choice i gotta wait till something to get a flight you know yeah. getting like my fingers and go down to the Radisson or, or the the double tree. It's just here I am. Well, how do you do that? And why? It's just like you wouldn't understand. It's just what we do. Yep. You know. Absolutely. And that that goes in with what you were saying about the the passion behind it. You, right. I've told thousands of people. There's they say, oh, you got such a great job. This is so awesome. I said, you know, you have to have the passion to do this. Well, it's like what Ricky, Ricky Carmichael, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's a, a big figure, a big public figure, and he's a fan of our TV show and he's done shows and been guests on things. And he's like, well, how many hours do you film a day? Like two or three. And I'm like, Ricky, we film like 12 hours a day to make to, for six months to make 13 episodes of our TV show. Plus go get on a plane. Like there's times I've left the set and change at the airport to get on a flight so I could be in Minneapolis for an arena cross and then fly the red eye back or do something so I can be on set at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning where I can't mismatch and go, well, I got to take a day off here or here. And there's no such thing as jet lag. So, you know, you got to hustle like that. So yep. I'm like, you do it. But well, one thing I did want to say, and a lot of people don't, uh, Again, when I talk about my dad, my dad, my dad, you know, raced cars, did everything. He hustled. I worked for, uh, you know, until he got his motorcycle shop. He had like a Saturday, a Saturday morning shop where he would open up. We go to his kids and he work on bikes and then we go ride. But then my mom and dad and him got divorced. So my mom married my stepdad and I was like eight years old and I, I got separated from that you know, the bikes and the fun and, and all that. Well, my stepdad, you know, it, it all comes full circle with how I'm living now because my stepdad was in construction. So I had to go to work, pull nails. So I remember I had to kick eight, nine years old trying to carry a piece of plywood that was bigger than me, you know, and drag it around a job site or, or pick up garbage or dig things with a shovel. But that's how I learned construction. I learned how to work. Well, my mom told me when my dad tried to give me dirt bikes, no, you're not getting dirt bikes. Uh, that's the reason I divorced him. If you want any dirt bikes or you want anything like that, you got to work and earn it yourself. So I found myself at like 11 or 12, like buying an XR75 for my dad so I could ride or a YZ80 and traded it up for a Hodaka. And then my dad's <laughs> like, hey, I got a bike. I just welded a counter shop rocket on it. I ended up with like a, I was like 13 or 14. I had like an RM370. You know, it's like crazy stuff. I rode whatever, but I still worked. And, and then I started racing and, and doing things. And, and like I tell people, for instance, like I got my first bicycle when I was like, it had training wheels on it. Lucky for me, it was a 20 inch bicycle and I learned how to ride it, take train wheels off. But it was like a, it was like a cruiser that had a 20 inch frame. Well, all the other kids at Christmas time were getting huffies. You know, everybody got a huffy whenever they came out in the 70s. I had to take my bicycle and put a pair of motorcycle handlebars on it. I put a, a seat on it, 
off a, a, a cruiser. Uh, I left the seat on it. Um, I think I put a banana seat on it and I, I made my own dirt bike. I made my <laughs> own next bike. And I rode that bike from the time I took the train wheels off till I was 13. When I'm 13, I, I'm working and I walk into D Croft bicycles and I buy the best BMX bike you can buy. So that starting to like earn and work and passion and, and get what you work for started because of probably the way I was raised, you know, yeah. leaving my dad, having a passion for something I love being taken away from me. And then you got to work. You're going to be in this house. You got to go to work. You're going to earn everything. And, and then that led me to basically dropping out of school when I was 16. I was racing my, I was racing then. I was old enough to take myself to the dirt bike track. I had friends that raced. And then my mom's like, you need to go, you need to, you need to go in the military. You, <laughs> you, 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 you're 16, you're making 300 bucks a week. You think you're 25 and <laughs> your lifestyle, whatever. Of course, I, you know, drinking a little bit of beer and, and doing whatever. My mom enlisted, uh, took me down to the recruiter. Uh, I was 16, and the same story is you hear from so many. Oh, well, he's too young. Uh, he's a high school dropout. Uh, we can't take him. He doesn't have a diploma. But if he scores high on the ASVAB, he can we'll, we'll do we'll, we'll take him. So lo and behold, smart guy me passed high on the ASVAB, and I turned 17 July 2nd, August 10th, the paperwork was done and I was in Paris Island on yellow footprints that quick, that wow. quick, no more dirt bikes. They're sold. But lucky for me, my dad had the shop. So when I'd come in and out, you could, I posted pictures. Like I got a, like an 82 RM 250. I would go race like the winter am if I was home for 30 days or <laughs> in and out. So I never stopped my passion for dirt bike racing. Like let's go buy another dirt bike. I got one. Well, I'm leaving on, on deployment. Dad, take care of the bike. Keep it in the shop. I'll be back. So I never really, I never really got away from it. And then as soon as I got out, I was 21. From working for my stepdad, I started pouring concrete, and I started racing again. <laughs> so then comes the family, and then comes you know the business and all kinds of stuff after that. It's crazy. Sure. Well, that was awesome because my next question was going to be how what what got you started? Where did it begin? And man, what a history. I gotta well, I gotta say something though that XR seventy five it that I started laughing because that was Cole's second bike and yeah. Cole still has that bike. <laughs> oh yeah, we can't get rid of it. My dad put me together like a, a I remember it was a Benelli sixty and it had big wheels on it. And <laughs> he was putting that together for me. I rode that and we all had a CT seventy. There was CT-70s with a centrifugal clutch, and there was one with, like, a three-speed. I had a clutch. I had one of those. Uh, a, Hodaka, a Hodaka Super Rat, you know? <laughs> Just so many bikes. Uh, Montessa 250 I rode. Like, my dad just had all these bikes, and I we were never – but I, on Christmas Day, you know, the other kids got the Elsnore, the this, the that, the brand-new bikes. And, again, I was faced with – riding whatever was in the shop, whatever somebody sold back to my dad or something, you know, it was always, but I enjoyed it. I didn't care because I love to ride dirt bikes. I love to ride. Yeah. So. I would say, I think, you know, when it comes to riding, like, well, it sounds like all three of us grew up like riding junk, you know, but yeah. it was, but it was our junk, right? Seventies <laughs> either, you know, you either, I think the first real, I think the first dirt bike I actually bought that was brand new was an 84 YZ 250. That was the first bike I actually rolled out brand new that's never been rode before. My whole wow. life, time I was probably five, six, seven, riding <laughs> on the back of my dad, going with him, you know, and, you know, other bikes after that. But, uh, you know, when you asked how I got started, I got married. I got married when I was 24. I stuck, quit, you know, I was working for a company making like 15 bucks an hour pouring concrete. 
And uh, my wife that I was married to for 18 years, they, she had two sons. Eric and Drew were six and four. And I got married. So now I got a family. I got to start a business. Um, by the time we got married, bought a house, had to get serious. Uh, by the time I was 27, I had 20 employees working for me. I'm making a lot of money. Wow. My dad gave the boys a couple bikes, but it was like five years. I didn't ride. I didn't do anything. Um, I, 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 I remember in 89, I broke my tibia and fibula. And that's how I met my ex-wife because I was at, at the bar with crutches with a rod at, sticking out of my leg. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, I've never seen you before. And she goes, well, I saw you yesterday at the beach. And I'm like, yeah, why don't you say hi? She goes, you had five girls with you. Pick <laughs> me up because I was racing dirt bikes. I was a cool guy, you know. I was like 24 years old. I'm going to dirt bike track. So anyway, I got my boys into racing. The promoter I used to race for when I was a kid, Pete Scalzo, started a track like five miles from the house at fairgrounds. So I show up with Drew. He's like, he was six and four. He's like six or seven now. It was five years I passed. So I think he was eight, maybe. And he was riding a Z50, and Derek had a KX60. And I'm like, I bought another dirt bike. So now we're like a family. I haven't rode it in five years. They're Stone Cold Beginners. And there's the promoter. There's some of the guys I grew up with. They're still racing pro class. And I'm trying to get into pro and ain't rode in five years. And it's just a mess. So... I think a year after that, I blew my knee out. But honestly, the boys raced uh, 15 years. I basically trained them. They rode Supercross. They rode Outdoor Nationals. Um, they actually, when I announced Arena Cross, they were racing Arena Cross. But how that transpired is Dean Diaz that owns Orlando Speed Park, I raced with Little Dean's dad. And we rode you know, pro level at, at state level at pro level. And uh, he asked me one time if I wanted to announce. And I said, sure, I'm hungry. Can you give me a bologna sandwich? I'll announce for you. And he was <laughs> in four, 2005, just to fill in. And they loved it. And like Ronnie Tishner, who was a factory Suzuki rider, you know, he, he I, everybody's got to know who Ronnie Tishner was. He, he was there training i think he was training i don't know if nico was riding in or not but he was instrumental in training nico is he and he's like wes this is your calling i'm like i'm not gonna be no announcer dude i'm just filling in for a bologna sandwich you know this is just for fun i'm just imitating like her Braun and and lynn nickerson and everybody that i've heard so many years and i think jersey joe told jeff cernick so i took one of my kids to a regional uh, up at Steel City uh, for for the pro sport class for Loretta's. And Rita, Rita Coombs is like, I heard you're a pretty good announcer. Why don't you call this pro class? So I called it because I knew everybody. They were racing yeah, yeah. with my kids. I've known them all since they were on 65s or 50s. It was easy. And she's <laughs> like, hey, why don't you come down and uh, you can help us out Loretta Lens. Well, I'd already been going Loretta Lens since 94. Or, you know, that was my first trip there. And here it is, like, 2000, I think, four, five. So I'm announcing Loretta's, and it's it's going good. My kid's racing. This one's over here. I'm announcing. And then um, it was really weird. My kid had just broken off from uh, – from I, before it was felled, I forget what it was called. My kid, his brother, Becky Coombs, Shane Schaefer, um, broke away from whoever had monster jam at the time and whoever had arena cross and they were doing super cross and they walked in the tower and they're like, Hey, we're starting a new series called Buku arena cross. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, you want to announce you want to, we're looking for somebody to announce and me, I never say no. And I believe in fake it till you make it. I go, sure. I'll do it. And Kevin, you know, like, okay, well, we'll hire Kevin Kelly too. He'll be like the guy up there, but you got to do the floor. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know nothing about nothing. All I knew was sneaking into Supercross, 
you know, seeing my buddies, you know, how's this going to go down? I get a plane ticket. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. Now I'm nervous. Hey, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. The lights are going to come on. You're going to know this guy. You're going to know that guy. You know this guy. I was scared to death. And the lights came on, and all I knew was just, welcome, race fans. Fort Worth, Texas, for the round, blah, blah, boot arena cross. And I did it. And I did the whole race. I did two years of it, which I got a lot of experience and production and how things work with lights and this and basically faking the whole thing just <laughs> imitating bouncers seeing what i i knew dirt bikes i knew dirt bikes it was like okay now i'm t telling everybody here what i see you know and i'll get up on the podium hey um josh Steeman, tell me about that race or or darcy lange you know great job and tiger lacy and 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 tommy hopmaster and and I started doing amateur racing then. Hey, you want to do uh, mini Olympics? Win Kern, who I used to race with, or Jerry West. Jerry West, while I used to go there, hired me to announce a couple minios. Okay. So now instead of paying you, you're paying me. Because I used to pay you to race and my kids. And it just steamrolled into something crazy to where Feld called me and wanted me to do the, the Amsoil Arena Cross. So I actually worked for them for almost 12 years. Wow. You know, uh, and then still doing the TV show. Then all of a sudden I'm at Lake Whitney and Rob, we did an a and &E True biography on where's ice today. You know, there was always like, what's he doing today? You know, those yep. little special. You know, I was the voice in that, you know, the guy that backed up what Rob was saying, they cut to me and our producer called and said, Hey, you know, Vanilla Ice does, uh, does uh, you know, some uh, home improvements and and uh, has property. We used to do a show and actually laughed at it. And uh, I was like, Whitney, and I didn't know this conversation was going on. And Rob hits me up. He goes, hey, when are you going to be home? This was 2009. He goes, when are you going to be home? I'm like, in a week. He goes, okay, we got a TV show. I go, what do you mean we got a TV show? He goes, no, bro. They were here, the camera crew. They did a sizzle. They love it. We're doing, we're doing a TV show. Didn't even know the name of it. <laughs> right after 2008, when people, the market crashed, and people were gutting houses and pulling, selling the plumbing out of it, the bathtubs and anything, the cabinets. So he buys his house, his neighborhood, and it takes three months. We do the first season. And I said to producer, I'm like, hey, you think we'll get another one? He goes, oh, it all depends on ratings. I mean, we did 10 years of it. We did 130 episodes. Wow. And. Still doing the racing, still doing, you know, uh, uh, then I get the call to do the Baja Bra with Pat up there. 2009, I start that. Same as the TV show. The Monster Cup starts right about then. Um, I'm doing some step in for outdoor, you know, pro motocross. I'm doing some supercross stand-ins. Um, I, I got Lake Whitney now. I got, uh, you know, uh, Oak Hill two weeks in a row. Uh, it's just took on a life of its own and I'm going to ride the wave. You call right. me, let's go. Let's ride this wave of, of, of craziness, you know, and, and let's <laughs> just see where it goes, you know? And then I meet people like you on my, on my journey. And there was a thing called MySpace a long time ago. And my thing yeah. on MySpace was I travel the world. I meet people and they become my best friends for life. <laughs> and, and mad dog, you're gonna be my you're gonna be in my life, man, for for forever. Whatever, whatever, whatever we got left, you know. Absolutely. Meet a person like you, but you're a guy, man. You're like one of those guys I I met, you know. And 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 you know, like Michael Walter and 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 Kurt Bush, you know. I met them through Monster Energy. I met them through doing events uh, where uh, Monster called me and they wanted to do a retirement video for Kurt Bush, but before he started, you know, driving for Michael Jordan. So I'm the liaison to say, hey, Rob, Monster Energy wants to do something. Okay, well, Kurt Busch wants your phone number. Oh, okay. And the funny thing is, now we're all friends. I talked to, <laughs> like, Kurt Busch and Michael Waltrip or, or Chris Lowcash from the Lowcash Brothers. He's a country singer. We're on this group text, and we, we're like brothers. We talk every day. What's up? How you doing? It's just 
it just keeps building, you know, and, and, and it's just fun. It's a fun, fun thing. Yeah. I noticed that one time when we were talking and uh, one of the events, I can't remember where, and we were talking about something and you're like, Oh, I got to text. That reminds me. I got to text Michael. And I'm like, huh, Michael. And he's like, yeah, Michael Walter. I'm like, Oh, you're kidding me. You're killing me right now. Cause yeah. he's got to be one of the, one of my favorite personalities in yeah. NASCAR. He picks on me though. It's pretty funny. Like he was at Bristol and he'll randomly send me a picture of a car with a flat tire and he'll go, Oh, Wes, this reminds me of you. And I just <laughs> laugh and laugh because he's just got that sense of humor to where it's, it's funny. Like at that moment, I needed that. I needed the, I needed that. You know, I don't know what kind of day I was having, and I just laughed. I go, <laughs> thinking about me, you know. But uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty fortunate. And and I try to, uh, you know, give back that fortunate I do. Uh, I ran with a pretty tough crowd uh, at one point before I went to Marines and Green Acres. And uh, none of those guys. The only thing that really saved me was I worked, and I had my dirt bike. Yeah. And that was kind of the time my mom was like, you need to get out of here. You need to go in the military. You need to go because none of those guys are really alive but one. And I'm talking about we're like 14, 15, 16. None of those guys are alive but one. The rest of them either were in prison because they were just – after 11 o'clock, I know nothing good happens. And I would always be like, well, I got to go. I got to work tomorrow. Or I'm going racing, you know. And uh, I go back to the community center now and I talk to the kids in that community center about making good choices and doing the right thing. Um, I buy them computers. I get them books for school. Um, COVID has kind of slowed it down, but uh, I take, you know, people that I know in there to talk to them. One of my producers on the show was uh, in Storm Chasers. So he actually drove that big monster tank looking vehicle into the tornado. Holy and smokes. You know, I want you to meet these kids. I said they're sixth graders to high schoolers in this program. And it's an after school study program that their parents send them because they don't want them home alone because of the neighborhood they live in. And uh, Byron did a whole video thing and the kids' eyes were that big because they know about hurricanes in Florida, but they oh. don't know what a tornado does. And, you know, I, I go back to, to help them kids out. And you know, the mayor's like put a street sign on it called the West Cane Way because my one of my slogans is there's a the right way, the wrong way, and the West Cane Way. <laughs> my way might not be like your way, but my way, I think I'll just do it my way, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was funny. I asked the kids, very first time I went in there, I was nervous. And I'm like, hey, how many of you guys think I've been arrested? Because I got tattoos and all that stuff. And they all go like that. They raise their hand. I go, no, I've never been arrested. I've never been booked. Um, I made good choices, you know, I recognized trouble and I, I, you know, kind of got into, you know, in deep with them to where like one day, you know, I tell them, help your parents. You got it easy. Um, all they want you to do now is just go to school. They buy your shoes. You got a cell phone. And, uh, one day I was at the gym and these three like guys were coming to me and I'm like, Oh shit, what I do are these guys from like my past and I'm ducking down and they go, Hey. <laughs> You're West Kane. I go, yeah, I'm West Kane. Uh, you were talking to my kids, and they were kind of like, you know, it's kind of serious in manner. And I go, yeah. They go, oh, we just want to tell you thank you. I'm like, for what? Oh, they help with the garbage now. They pick up their stuff. They're doing their homework, you know. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's cool. That's what we do. So that yeah. little bit right there makes me want to give back more, want to do more, you know. Sure. It's not about – it's not about – the ego. I don't have an ego. My ego is out the window. It's like, <laughs> what can I do? You? What yeah. can I, how can I help you? You know? Yeah, I that's cool, help. man. I mean, it's funny little backstory. I'm, I'm explaining to my wife how excited I am, to be honest, about this interview and stuff. And so she, she does a quick Google search on your name. Well, out of all the cool stuff you do, what comes up first is your philanthropy stuff. And I, I think that's just something... And I know you don't do it for that reason, but the fact that that's what comes up first, I mean, that, that should tell you everything right there. And that's when I got it's to learn volumes. about West Cane Lane, you know, the little library and everything. 
Oh, the like, little yeah, yeah it's, like, it's just cool. I remember we did that. We did that on the TV show, and it's a, a program, and I think every city has it, where you take a book, read a book, you donate a book, and it's just you know. And we built one, the Ice Project, and it actually sits in City Hall, so the kids can be there with their parents while the parents are doing you know something at City Hall. They can actually pull a book out because we know how important reading is. Yeah, I mean. Kids are looking at their phone or playing video games, but you know, books are important. I I read books. I still sit down and I'll crack a book open and I'll read it. You know, it's important. That's I I read. Uh, I used to read a lot more. You know, when I was when I was building the super stocks and the sportsman cars and stuff. But you know, there's obviously all this hands on stuff that you're learning, and I had a great mentor uh, and. Mike Fast Lane, you know, and, and God rest his soul, but he was a great mentor and, um, but he wasn't always the most patient. It was like, look, this does this, this does this. I'm like, well, why, you know, I get it right now. You want me to take care of this, but I would go read a book on suspension setup, you know, or I, I would read an entire book in one night about Smokey Eunuch and, and some of his creativeness, if you will. Um, yep. And it was inspiring. And, you know, it's, it, you can learn, you can be inspired, makes you laugh, makes you cry. You know, I remember uh, uh, my buddy um, Colton Moore, you know, the Moore brothers after, after we lost Caleb um, he wrote that book, Reaching for the Stars, and I, I shit you not, I have read that book probably six times, um, and every time I'm in tears half the way through, you know, and I'm like, man, that's, that's not something that I get when I'm watching TV, you know? No, it's good. That's good. I, I did the same thing you did when I started, uh, when I got my race car, it's a long story how it ended up over at the shop that it is. But those guys, like I told you, you go to South Carolina, grandpa, great grandpa, that's NASCAR country up there. So they all got, you know, all the way down. And now the guys that are my age, they've been racing up there since the forties and fifties. So they got a lot of heritage up there. So, my car's at the shop. They see me on TV. They want my car to shop, but I can't tell you a damn thing it's doing out on the track, you know? <laughs> and so I did the same thing you did. I got me a book on setup and how to scale a car and the 60, 40 and, and weight disturb. So I have to learn now that, you know, what, what push is, what, you know, you can't fix getting out of the turn. If you can't get in the turn, you, you can't fix going <laughs> up center. You got to, go in and, and just so many things about, you know, loose and tight, you know, loose is fast, you yeah. know, and, 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 and I did the same thing you did. So it's just ironic, you know, that you did that. I had to read about suspension and set up and do my homework. Cause they're looking at me like, well, I go, the car's doing a little twitchy and they go, no, it's darting. Yeah. <laughs> well, your toes out let's check your toe let's check you know maybe put some bar in it if it's doing this or what's it doing when you're going in you know and i'm yeah. like I'm getting better i'm getting better yeah well so. it's you know it's i was i was really blessed to do a bunch of that for for a long time and we had a lot of cars because we had a whole family it was in pacific northwest but there's some heritage up there also not oh yeah near the carolinas i mean much respect to the the birth of all that, you know. I I wouldn't know what I know if those guys didn't do what they did to begin with. So, um, you know, and but uh, yeah, you do a lot of research and a lot of trial and error. Um, one of one of the big I never really saw myself, and I know you do a lot of rider coaching and stuff, and you're always talking. I see you talking to the riders all the time. At, arena cross or <coughs> excuse me, enduro cross, wherever we're at. Um, and giving those guys help. And, um, one of the biggest things for me, I was, I had raced 
with Mike for a couple of years as his crew chief. And, and uh, the second year we built a car for his daughter that turned 16. And after the, I think first practice night, we built a $500 claimer car. It was a 70 Impala, uh, no, 72 Impala SS. So it's two door hard top, just giant paint it bright yellow. And it called it the banana boat. Cause it was, it was a monster, you know, but after the first practice night with her, we went out the next week and he was, she didn't run five laps and she came in the pits and he tried to talk to her. And next thing I know, they're yelling at each other and he just grabs the clipboard and throws it at me. He goes, she's your freaking problem. I can't talk to her. You're, she wants to race. It's your problem. You got to teach her how. And I'm yeah. like, have you ever seen me on a circle track? There's a reason I don't run a circle track. <laughs> Can I make a car go ram one? Oh, hell yeah. Can I make more than five laps and hit my points? No, nah, I get to look and, oh, there's a hot chick in the stands at turn four. And next thing you know, you're in the wall or you're in the infield or, you know, I just, I just can't stay there. It's like I hit my marks and I, I keep telling my, hit your marks. Yeah. But look over there, <laughs> you know, but uh -huh. yeah, working with her, um, you know, we got, it, it's really rewarding. And I learned an awful lot. Um, very blessed there for sure. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, as you know, you know, when you're coming in and you're, like for me, getting in, I was nobody from nowhere. Nobody knew me from Adam, you know. Oh, I think that guy rode dirt bikes and he might have, I think he rode some, uh, did some road racing. And it's like, yeah, on motorcycles, you know, not on cars. But there's a lot to learn. Oh, yeah. And you never quit learning. And that's the whole thing. No. You quit learning. Like, like with me now, and, and I'll switch back over. We're just bouncing around, but like, okay, I'm doing, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting the, the stock car racing. Good. All I like now is just to win one. I'm getting close. But my biggest thing that challenge was last week for the first discipline of Enduro Cross, because like I said, like we were talking about, I've done Supercross. I, do, I know those kids from being an amateur all the way to pro. I know the Cooper Webbs. I know Chase Sesson. I know the Adam Sinsrells, the Carmichael the windows but now i just went into the arena salt lake city yep now there's rocks in there i'm calling the telephone poles but there's a matrix there's the rock garden there's yeah but yeah. oh, there was an email about this guy needs to learn what's going on here you know i'm announcing taddy uh lazuziak's <laughs> name wrong uh, i was I'm perfect calling, that time <laughs> uh uh blake gurick I, I, Gutsy. I, I, Gutsy. I'm totally a mess. So, I mean, I can sell the crowd the show, yeah. but the real people are like, this guy can't even say my name right. So <laughs> this whole week, I've been doing homework. I, 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 I know who Taddy is. I know who who uh, uh, Colton Haker is now. I know who uh, Christian Hart is. Uh, some of the women racers, um, me and, and, um, uh, me and, um, Jack, the photographer, Oh yeah, we're, he's in the other room. He's playing flashcards with me. He's sending me pictures that he's took of riders and I have to tell him verbally in a voice message who they are. <laughs> so I'm up to speed this week. So you got to always learn. So that was a challenge, you know, and Todd hit me up. He goes, you're going to have to get to know these guys. And I was in there just rocking it. And, of course, selling the show selling the show to the crowd, getting them to respond and scream and yell. But the little fine nuts and bolts, I really had to do a lot of homework this week, you know, um, and find out about some of these writers, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, Abbott and, um, you know, the different, the, the you know, De Destre's son and yeah. – uh, Cooper? You just have to learn, and and, and I'm, uh, you know, Johnny Walker, so guys like that. So I'm still going to do more homework, 
when I get there, when they start coming in on Friday, now I'm going to spend more time in the pits with them. Yeah. So it gets to be a natural relationship to where we're going to crush it this Saturday night. You know, I didn't take it lightly. I don't like, I don't, I, 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 I like constructive criticism and it, it fires me up to do better. Yeah. You know, well, I don't, you know, know, don't know it all. Don't tell me, you know, <laughs> no, I need to know. That's inspiring though, because I mean, someone, <coughs> excuse me, someone at your level, I mean, and you're still fired up one email and you're fired up to go dig deeper, like, you know, and, and I know uh, it's funny cause I want to jump back to this in a second, but it's like, the project I want to I want to hear about the project you just got done with the gray gold, but anyways, yeah. Um, yeah, and that enduro cross is an entirely entirely different thing, you know. Um, and I think the first one I went to, I think, I think that was in Denver, um, and I only went to one that year, uh, so that would have been nineteen. I think maybe was the first of the enduro cross I went to. And, you know, I knew these names. I mean, I've watched it before and uh, I'm like, wow, why, you know, what am I doing with guys like this? Like I'm literally walking through the pits, just totally intimidated. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm a, fan. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a motorcycle enthusiast fan. Yeah. And I'm a fan of these guys. I'm a Good. fan of them because, you know, that takes skill. You got to be strong to do that. It and takes I a think lot of discipline. You got to have something about you different than anything to be able to do what they do. And I'm a fan. And that yeah. goes back to the passion of the sport and respect. Respect yeah. to see those guys doing what they do. And I just want to – I want – I want to do better by them. You know, I don't want Taddy eating dinner after a race going, that guy's an idiot. He don't even know how to say my name. And he probably did say that, but that's okay. I'll make it better. I, I want to make him feel 20 feet tall when he gets on the podium. And yeah. that's what I want that's my job. Yeah. No matter what I do, no matter who my friends are, no matter where I go, my job, like I said, there's no ego. My job is to make you feel 10 foot tall and I'm yeah. going to do it. I'm going to do it. I can, I can tell anybody if you haven't seen or been to a race, an arena race that, that Wes Kane has been the voice of get out to one because talk about getting the crowd going. Holy cow. I was, I was thinking of Gallup the last couple of years, you know, and, we packed the stands, 50, 500 people, I think, two nights in a row. He had 5,500 people just waiting. People there. How many? In Gallup, there was almost 8,000 people. Wow. That's what they said. It was standing room only. Oh, yeah. It was packed. I thought the stands were smaller than that. Holy cow. They but, said there was that many. But you know what's really cool what we did this year? Because – they introduced me as, as, as Wes Kane from the TV show, the host, which is really cool. And I'm humble and blessed for that. But when I left there this year, there was, uh, I guess they tried to get the younger kids out of the reservation to see different things uh, to open them up. So a lady messaged me and she's like, hey, we're taking a group of eight kids to a Royals baseball game in like three weeks. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. She goes, Vanilla Ice is doing a concert there where at the end of the game, you know, he does a he, he does sound check and they build a stage. They put it behind the wall. And I've been to one of these a few times uh, down in Tampa. And then at the end of the game, they roll the stage back out. They'll invite the people down to the field. I mean, when you're in center field wall, there's a sea of people all the way to home plate. And, you know, the baseball field is pretty big. Yeah. So she's like. I want to know if, since you know Ice, basically she wants to see if I'm if I'm bluffing or not. I mean, evidently she's on the show. She's like, I want the kids to meet him. I want to. Okay, so and I know eight passes plus it's a, it's a lot, but I I called Rob and I'm like, Rob, this is really 
that's, you know, a special thing. I think we got to make this happen. And he said, don't even question it. Tell her how many passes she needs. I'll get it done. And, you wow. know, I, I called her. I, I messaged her here. The pass is going to be with this person. Here's that. And I didn't hear nothing. So I know <laughs> in my brain this game is starting. I'm watching. He's doing the concert. We're cool. And I'm like, oh, I hope. Normally, if I send somebody a concert, I get like a picture, you know, or something. I didn't hear anything. It was crickets. And I'm like, oh, my God, I hope they got in. I hope this worked out. <laughs> in the morning at 8 a.m., I was checking my phone day. I looked and there was 10 kids with adults in center field with him with the biggest smiles on kids I've ever seen. And that right there, I got like right now. I've got goosebumps. Yeah, I felt like we gave those kids a memory for life. Wow! And, and when we go back to Gallup, it's going to be even crazier because they're going to tell everybody, "Hey, Wes Kane got us with Vanilla Ice." It's you know because it's the small, it's the reservation, so it's yeah. even going to be awesome next year. Yeah, you know it's going to be good. And and I, doing things like that is money. Dude, it's so, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I get a little bit of a tear in the corner of my eye, for real. That's like, it's touching, you know, and it's, it's. I think it's important to give back. And it's, yeah. it's funny because, you know, on the front side of that, nobody knows what Wes Kane did to make that happen but everybody appreciates it, you know? That's uh, huge. Uh, we do it. We do whatever. And, and yep. believe me, me and Rob have a – we have a charity that we do. We go uh, – it was crazy. We, we – you know, we know a lot of – we know a lot of people. So we, we, uh, we uh, were hooked up with a radio station. This is going back 15 years. We met a radio DJ – and um, they wanted to do like a block party. So Rob was like, okay, well, what are we going to do? And then I'm coming up with me being Marie. I'm like, well, so why don't we have the charity? We'll do this block party and we'll collect toys for kids, toys for tots. So I think the first year we collected maybe 100 toys. Within 10 years, we're filling a semi or two full of toys at this wow. block party. And we started going on Christmas Eve to the hospital with leftover toys. Cause when you, the Marines have to have the toys by a certain amount of time, we're still getting toys in. And Rob's like, Hey, you know, we got to give these toys. We'll go to hospitals. Me and him would drive through neighborhoods that you would go through and we would give the kids out toys. We give them toys. So we go the first year we go to the children's hospital in Wellington and Rob is big with, um, with, uh, you know, make a wish foundation and so forth. He's yeah. like, dude, we're going in. And so we start going in these rooms and these kids are terminal. They're terminal. They're five, six, seven, 10, 15. They're terminal. And we go in there. And we walk in and they see them and then they see me and we're giving them toys. Well, me, the big mush, I go out in the hallway and I'm bawling. <laughs> I'm bawling my eyes out because these kids got the smiling just like you are right now. Yeah. They're just smiling and I know they're terminal. Yeah. Like there's there there just could be their last Christmas. So um Rob comes out and he goes, hey, he goes, you got to get back in there. He goes, I know you're a tough guy. He goes, I know. He goes, but you got to get back in there. Um, can't let these kids see you like that. And I'm thinking, okay, this Vanilla Ice telling me I got to get tough. <laughs> you know, and we've known each other since – because Rob used to come and ride race when in, uh, in Miami – before you know back in the 80s when he was younger and i was a little older so we met way back then so he's telling me you got to get back in there these kids need you 
So I'm just balling because I got my own kids, you know, and I'm thinking about how lucky I am, but how these kids are smiling and so happy right now yeah. that it doesn't matter how, what's good to them. They're enjoying their life. And that gave me another perspective about living and doing things to see those kids that know that they're terminal, dude, they ain't getting out of there. Yep. They could last six months, a year. That's their home, that hospital bed. And you know what? It made me different. It made me like, Hey, I am, I am lucky and I've got to give back and I've got to make people happy. You know, when skies are gray, you got to be a sunshine. Yep. And we do that every year. We go to that hospital and we see those kids on Christmas Eve. There ain't nothing more important than that. Wow. And if you get a person, and I talk to people, I go, you think you got problems? Christmas Eve, you see me, you're going to go for a ride with me and ice. And you're going to see something that what you got going on ain't nothing yeah. compared to what you're about to do about to see and do so that's why when you see me you don't see me with chips down right because we are blessed man every day we get to get to do what we want yep 100 percent true life life experiences right there and we believe in karma we believe in giving back we believe in treat somebody how you want to be treated yep you know I believe in yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Still, whether you're younger than me, I'll still open doors for people. I, I mm -hmm. still, you know, believe you reap what you sow. Absolutely. You know, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, I feel the same way. And I know Cole is the younger generation, if you will, no offense, Cole, but I know that he was raised that way. And Cole, you're very much that way too. You know, where's you, Cole at? You you try right. So here in SoCal, growing up in military family on both sides, it's like it's not an option, right? It's what you do. Yeah, that's it. And, and well, uh, you know, we we're just we are really also blessed, and that's that's part of what along for the ride is. It's like. Uh, you know, I, I joke around. I started a podcast because, you know, I didn't have anything else to do. Um, but I'm so blessed with so much work that it's like, and and so many friends and so many great stories. Like, I, I've never heard this story from you, Wes. And, man, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I got tears in my eyes. I mean, that's 100% true. I know Cole's a big softy. I'm sure he's probably... Well you know, you know, and, and I believe, you know, in certain things, I mean, I don't, one thing we don't put out is religion or politics. You keep that to yourself, sure. but I believe, you know, we're all here for a reason. Um, I went to a Bible study one time and I asked, I asked, you know, certain things happen, like people run out of gas and I'll help them or I'll push your car in an intersection or somebody will have, I'll walk out my door and somebody will have a flat in my driveway. And first thing I'll do is like, what's going on here? And then I see it. I won't say nothing. I'll just go over, hey, get out of the way. Let me change your tire. Let me get you on your way. But I asked, there was a lady in a wheelchair. Her name's Nancy. And I go, Nancy, all this crazy stuff happens. Like people find me in the airport and they need help. And I'm like, why are you asking me when there's a million people that work here? But I quit questioning in that. Yeah. And they say, I can't find my gate. Can you help me? You know what I do? I get up and I go, it's over there. Come on over here. And me at the airport, I don't like to be around people. I'll hide out, put my headphones <laughs> on. I'll get on my social media. I stay away, you know. And um, she said, you're a wanderer. And I go, what do you mean I'm the wanderer? A lady in a wheelchair, Nancy. I remember sitting up in front. She goes, you're the wanderer. I go, the wanderer? She goes, yeah, you're pick, dude. You're the guy. You travel around and you got to bring certain things to people. Yep. And I'm like. Okay, I'll, I'll go with what you say. So here I go. You know, yep. if that's what I'm, I'm, if that's what I'm here to do, then that's what we're gonna do. I'm so. I'm a hundred percent there with you, um, and I think we we feel a lot the same on that stuff. And and yeah. on my podcast, 
I can I I'm not afraid to say you know I believe in God and He's touched my life. Oh, and, I, I I do I know. And but it's in, in, you know in my I understand. Thing, yeah. But it's like, but it's like you were saying it's it's a calling, right? People all of a sudden see it. I don't, I don't question it. I just go yeah. there. You know. Yep. Like the the friendship I have with you, like Todd. Um, you know, now the bond that I'm going to make with the, some of these uh, enduro cross riders, where now I'm going to tell you, I think enduro cross is awesome, or, or, you know, up in stock car country, the family that I stay with up there, the Guthrie families, you know, they're a big family, been there, and they have certain things, and they they ask me about because I'm out, I'm out and about yeah. certain things, and 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 we trade advice, and we trade knowledge, and. And I think I'm there for a reason, you yeah. know, uh, you know, um, you're just, you know, I don't know. I don't, I, a quick question. I just do what comes my way. I try to do right by people. I try to, you know, you just got to like, uh, you know, there's a writer, uh, Gavin Towers. Uh, he's training with star or not with, he's training with star, but he's riding for the uh, NSA team. Um, Good little rider. I've seen him win a bunch of races. Nobody would help him. They wouldn't give the kid a spark plug, you know, when he was on minis. And now he's probably – somebody asked me, can you help? Can you help? And I've been kind of mentoring his career the last three years, and he's probably one of the top – top. you know, you got Ryder D, you got Chance Hymas, and you got Gavin Tyers. They're one of the – he's one of the top three prospects. You know, he went to all the futures races, Supercross, landed on every podium, you know. Wow. Um, doors are opening for him. So I have people that come to me and I'm guiding their careers through this because we just know it, you know, and, yeah. and what not to do. And, you know, because this the sport of motocross or supercross, it can be cruel, you know, you can have a lot of talent and you can be looked over. So, for sure. you know, I want to give back to some of these guys that might be getting overlooked and he's training right now. He's not on Team Star, but he's got an opportunity. He trains with Swanee. He's riding with the Star guys. He's riding with Hayden Deegan. And Jeannie Carmichael's training him, also with Swanee. So there's a blessing right there that you're like, wow. You yeah. know, three years ago, this kid couldn't get a spark plug. Yeah. And he's a top prospect. Like, one moto is at Loretta's this year, you know. And finished that's... second in the pro sport class. So, but anyway. Yeah. And that's what it's about. They, you know, yeah, we're so that, blessed. Knock yeah, we're, out. we're so blessed to be like where we're at. Like we, I don't know. It's like we always smiles and like just spread it. You know. Hey, look what you did for me. I needed a ride to the airport one day. You didn't know me from Adam. I was just on the tour, and you're like, "Hey, dude, I got you, man." Yeah, I'm always. taking you to the airport, and we didn't even have a race car connection then. No, that's I'm right. You out going, hey, make don't forget me. It was <laughs> other than you going, hey, you need to give this stuff out and pump up kicker. Now, dude, I don't go to the races. I come find you, man. I got to spend yeah. time with you for a minute, you know. And it yeah. might only be for a minute, but I have so much respect for you that I got to go out of my way to come see you <laughs> to know that I'm going to promote kicker and do what I got to do out there, so you could be back there going. That's my guy. That's and my that's dude. It. And I have no in my heart that I want to make represent your company. Yeah, the best you I know, can. I had completely <laughs> forgotten about that ride to the airport, my brother. See, I don't. I don't forget. <laughs> Where were we? We were somewhere. Where were? Was it? One North Carolina. It was. Uh... It was Amarillo. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's right. I don't that's... forget, man. You. Hey. Cause I had to go drop my rental car off. Cause I was yeah. traveling with the crew back to Guthrie in their hey, hauler. I rode here with Jack from salt Lake. Yes. And that lucky for that. And that's how you pinned me down or you would have got me the other night oh. or Thursday night. But now I'm going to ride back with Jack all the way to Denver. Well, I may be following you guys. I'm so. on door, dude. <laughs> but yeah. I love it. But Hey, Jack's really hungry right now. Okay. We need to, yeah, we need to wrap it up. Um, man, thank you so much. 
Hey, you know what? I, I had an idea when you were talking about the uh, stock car stuff. Let's sometime down the road, not tomorrow or anything. Let's let's do let's do us a bench racing episode. Just talk we about your that. stock car program and hey, stuff like Jack, that. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, Mad Dog, like, oh, before I go to the races, I got time in the morning. I go to the junkyard and get race car parts, and then ship yeah. them back east with racers and their moto vans and stuff because yeah. I can't get parts in South Carolina. Yeah, that's the stuff we want to hear right there. That. There's a, yeah. that's a great story. That's the stuff we want to hear for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, let's do that in a, in a wrap up a bench racing episode. Yep. Wes Kane, my brother, thank you so love, much. Hey, love you guys, man. Love you. Appreciate you. I will see okay. you uh, Thursday, probably Couple Thursday days. afternoon. So, hey, I'll, everybody hit me up on my uh, Instagram at Wes Kane. Uh, come on, load me up. Oh, let's yeah. do it. And yeah, then your Instagram. I want you to give me a link, do something. Let's, yeah. uh, I'm going to do a screenshot now. Gotcha. So we can promote and plug and do whatever, you know, where are you at? Yeah. You there? there you go. Yep. yep. Know. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate it greatly. I know you're, you are a giant personality in this world and we're on, I think, what are we? Episode eight, Cole? Episode eight right now. Yep. Episode eight right here. So, dude, thank you so much. Um, you know, we're doing this to try and get people's stories out. I'm not trying to, I'm not doing this because of the monetary. So far, I'm not worried about that. I want to get people's stories out. And stuff like your story, man, it's just touch my heart for sure brother <clears throat> so good, man. i appreciate both of you we're gonna we're gonna sign off you got any sponsors that you need to thank wes uh monster energy bp racing fuels um uh, uh bump box uh regal ideas uh farm boys um deck stars um atlas speed factory um, Leo, uh, uh, Tucker trucking, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm picturing my race car right now. Cause everything's right. on the side of my race car. Uh, uh, uh Kurt Bush incorporated, uh, Michael Walter brewing, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Guthrie performance chassis. Um, yeah, I think we, I think we got it. There you go. See, I put you on the spot. That's so you can practice for when you're on the top of the podium. I got it though. I think I got them. I think I nice. got it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Wes, thank yeah. you so much. Go grab some dinner with Jack. When you see Jack, give him a big hug for me. I, I will. Jack speaks very highly. Day. Thank you again. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys soon. See you. All right. All right. Be safe. Thank you, Wes. Not All right. Thank you. Out. That was a great episode. Um, Man, my my heart was just there, you know, really getting me in the feels. Um, super lucky. We just were, uh, I think that was a good episode. We want to be sure and thank uh, Kicker Performance Audio. Um, you know, all your audio needs, car, boat, side-by-side, -side, motorcycle, off-road, personal audio, I think Cole's wearing a pair of the Bluetooth earbud or wired earbuds. Sorry. I'm wearing a pair of the um, wired headphones. The kicker.com. You can find your local kicker dealer or you can find anything you need for your car, truck, or play toy. Um, Bomber floating eyewear. Man, I just saw Jason, the bom uh, a Jason from Bomber Eyewear at Sand Sports. Uh, it was great to visit with him. Um, you know, those guys right off the get go, mad dog, anything you need, what do you need? What do you need? And I'm like, dude, I'm really good. I got two pair of prescription bombers with two different tints in the lenses. I've got my blue lights for working in the office. I've got my mono series that I'm wearing right now. Um, the boogie bombs. And I'm like, bro, I'm solid. Are you sure? I'm like, 
so they're such a great partner, you know, uh, bomber eyewear.com bomber floating eyewear, the pairs that I wear, um, and you can get them all this way. These are not special. You get them in the, uh, OSHA and ANSI, I think ANSI 87 OSHA approved safety lens and polarized. Um, just love them. Been wearing them for years. They're great guys. Tommy, super rad dude. Um, at some point, I think I'm going to have him on the show if I can wrangle him. But BomberEyewear.com and, again, Kicker.com. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Cole, thank you. Could thank you. Thank you for uh, you. getting on one of my heroes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you did just fine, by the way. You were a little quiet there for the beginning. I was getting nervous that you were froze. I'd rather say nothing and then besides, you know, making a fool of myself. I, I'd rather Eddie you say something style. made a fool of yourself because we all would have laughed and moved on. But <laughs> it's all good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for visiting with us in West Kane. I would like to uh, tell you, Sam Sports Super Show is next. We will have that episode probably very shortly after this one. Thank you all so much. Mad Dog out.